of the person we're talking about, his life will draw tears from your eyes. Today, my brother, my sister, we have something interesting to share with you. And I need you to come along. Today, we're talking about Tiboho. And I'm already shedding tears. His story is going to break your heart. His story will make you weep. My brother, my sister, if you are ready, let us go into the story. Tiboho McDonald Machinini was born on the 27th day of January in 1957, I beg your pardon. 27th January 1957. In fact, about two months before this country became independent. My brother, my sister, and he was born in Jabavu, in Soweto, South Africa. I have been to Jabau. I know Soweto very, very well. And today I'm telling you a story from my heart. This is the photograph of our hero for today. Tiboho McDonald Machinini. At Beth, his mother decided to nickname him Chiechi. Chiechi. So he was simply called Chiechi in the area. And Chiechi is spelled T-S-I-E. T-S-I. Chiechi. Chiechi was born on the 27th of January in 1957. My brother, my sister, he was an extremely bright student. Very, very bright in school. He was always tops of his class. My brother, my sister, he was second of 13 children born to his father and mother. His father was called Ramotibe. And his mother was called Nomkita. Nomkita, Virginia. And his father was simply called Ramotibe Machinini. My brother, my sister. He was extremely bright and popular in Soweto. People even called him Press, Press, Press. Simply meaning President, President, President. They believed that one day he'll be president of South Africa. He was always talking Pan-Africanism and talking about chasing away the white man in the days of apartheid, even at a very young age. And he was tall for his age. Chiechi, Tiboho, McDonald, Machinini. My God, see what happened now. He went to school at Morris Isaacson High School. And this is a very powerful high school in South Africa, my brother. The Morris Isaacson High School. In fact, it is a government secondary school in Soweto. It was founded in 1956. And he was born in 1957. My brother, my sister, this school is a very important black school right there in South Africa. That was where he was educated. He became successful from that school. So, so bright. Everybody knew him in the school. My brother, my sister, he became the head of the debating team. He debated from one school to the other, and his school always won. Hey. He became the president of the Methodist Wesley Guild. Because he was a Christian who loved to pray, and at the same time, he loved to argue. No wonder he was the president of the debate club. Hear this now. Now, a move by South Africa's apartheid government to make the Afrikaans language an equal mandatory language of education for all South Africans in conjunction with English was extremely unpopular with black and English-speaking South African students. Remember we told you about that? 
In fact, the South African government decided that apart from teaching English as the main language in the schools of South Africa, the white man's language of Africans, a combination of an African language, Russian, and also Dutch, my brother, my sister, should also be taught. But the black students said, no, we are already learning a foreign language of English. If anything at all, let us use Zulu. This is the school our hero attended. Morrison Isaacson's high school, that's the school he attended. My brother, my sister. So our hero for today started talking to students. We have to go on a demonstration. And this was in 1976. Let us go on a demonstration. It is only during a demonstration that we can vent our spleen on the government and let the government understand that, no, we are not interested in this nonsense. My brother, my sister, as a student himself, Machinini planned a mass demonstration for the 16th of June, 1976. This demonstration later got known as the Soweto Uprising because he intended that it would just be a demonstration walking on the streets and singing patriotic songs. Asim Bonanga, Asim Bonafu Mandela to Asim Bonaona. He didn't know the fire he was stroking. He didn't know the anger the people had waiting. And this was how the whole thing started. My brother, my sister, you can see the students on the streets. This was the 16th of June, 1976. I was only two years old. My brother, my sister, the students took to the streets of Soweto, right in front of their school. They moved on. And here you can see our hero, Thibault McDonald Machinini, standing next to the lady in front. My brother, my sister, singing. Asim Bonanga, Asim Bonafu Mandela to Asim Bonahona. Oh my God. They were singing and moving, singing. All of a sudden, the police in South Africa felt that this was a threat. So they decided to come in. When they moved into the demonstration, they asked the students to stop. But the students did not see why they should stop. So they asked the police, why should we stop? We already sought your permission to move. Why? Then the police decided to open fire. In fact, they started with hot water. And the students felt threatened. In fact, even the presence of the police at a peaceful demonstration by little, little school children. Look at the little school children there. My brother, my sister, walking on the streets. My brother, my sister, by 1976, our hero, Thibaut McDonald Machinini, was only 19 years. 19. He was a teenager. The one who started the whole demonstration. So when the police arrived on the scene and the students got agitated, some of them ran in helter-skelter because the police in South Africa in the days of apartheid was nothing but a symbol of terror. Some of the students started throwing stones at the police and then they started to use hot water on the students. Hot water. After the hot water, hey, they used live ammunition. Blacka, blacka, boom, boom, boom. Black, black, black. Ratatata, rak, 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 rak. Shooting the students with machine guns. Now you can see some of the students apprehended by the police. Some of them were beaten up so terrible. There was somebody who was beaten up until he died. And then we all remember the story of Peterson. Hector Peterson. Who was shot a little boy. He died from the bullet of the gun of the dirty South African police. Aye. Thanks to a photographer who took the photos, he himself later had to run into exile. 
the South African police started looking for who spearheaded that demonstration. They started looking for our hero, Tabor Hall, McDonald Machinini. He ran to England, sought asylum in England, and whilst he was in England, my brother, my sister, he realized that he, England was too cold for him. He went to Liberia, and in Liberia, he got married to Miss Liberia, a name Welma Campbell. They got married in 1977. Our hero was only 20 years old when he got married, just one year after the South African uprising of Soweto. Hey. The marriage did not last long. He was only 20 years. Traumatized from the killings on the street of Soweto. Oh my God. Tabor Hall, McDonald Machinini. Yeah, what happened now? He decided to leave Liberia and he went to Guinea. Little did he know that the South African police apparatus were still looking for him. This is a photograph of Miss Liberia, the beautiful Welma Campbell. And our hero for today, and I'm talking about Tiboho, McDonald Machinini. Oh my God. They were so young when they got married. The beauty queen was 19 and he was 20. Oh my God. They got married, but the marriage lasted just for a, a moment. And then he relocated to Guinea. And when he was in Guinea, the South African police apparatus aided by a dirty government in power, decided, my brother, my sister, to chase him all the way to Guinea. And they, there they got him. My brother, they killed him right there in Guinea. He died in 1990. We do not know what day, because it was a secret killing. We got to know about it days after. And when he was killed, they returned him to South Africa on the 4th of August in 1990, where he was buried at the Avalon Cemetery. Now, the Avalon Cemetery, my brother, my sister, is the same cemetery where Hector Peterson was buried and some other victims of the Soweto uprising. The Avalon Cemetery, my brother, my sister, is one of the largest graveyards in South Africa. It was opened in 1972 during the height of apartheid as a graveyard exclusivity for only black people. Hey, Avalon Cemetery, a graveyard for only black people. Can you believe that? Because black people were dying in their droves, so they got them a big cemetery, the largest in South Africa, to bury them in there. My brother, he was buried in there. And today, when you look at it, that is his grave. On his grave is only written black power because he was a man who spoke about black power from when he was a little child on the streets of Soweto. He died and was buried right there at the Avalon Cemetery. And this is the epitaph on his grave. My brother, my sister, South Africans mourned him. He was a symbol of liberty. He was a symbol, oh my God, of the fight for liberation. There is a statue of Tibor Machinini by Johannes Pokela in the grounds of his old school that was unveiled on the 1st of May 2010, 10 years after he was killed. My brother, my sister, a producer would put up that statue. So you get to see it right in front of his school. My brother, my sister, the Morrison Isaacson High School, where he was the most brilliant student. This is the statue. And there he raises his right hand, signifying the black power. My brother, my sister, he died out of exhaustion. He died out of repression. He died, my brother, my sister because of the liberation fight. My brother, my sister, for his own black people. This is Tiboho McDonald Machinini, a.k.a. Chiechi. 
He died. He suffered so much trauma. Today we remember you, Papa. Papa, uni nyaminko wate. Papa, uni nyaminko. Papa, uni nyaminko. Papa, uni nyaminko. Oh, Papa. Papa, uni nyaminko. Papa, uni nyaminko. Uni nyaminko. Uni nyaminko. In the bedding of knowledge, my brother, my sister, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? Now that you know, what would you do? Be an any or lay a mini of our fair Zuda Kagane Mezaka Yini. Yea, Papa Mobokaya Nufifia in Yanuka in our war. Banaehu, a bed then Banaehu, Bea Badi, Lele and Jima Singer Bear Kunne, Lele and Jima Singer Berry. He's been the African history class. And today, we've been talking about Tiboho McDonald Machinini. Oh, yes. <laughs> Rest in peace, Asimbo Nanga Asimbo Na. Oh my God. The emperor, the conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. Hey. Zobu, zobu. Why are you